so much for coming in. Really appreciate my it. My pleasure. pleasure. You must be quite busy at the moment. Um, do you sort of enjoy this part of um, you know the promotion and getting out there and talking about the work, or is it the kind of you know sort of oh, a, a necessary evil? I never quite know how how much people enjoy this kind of. Well, I call it the circus media. <laughs> Um, or the media circus, I should say. Um, I love talking about my new product. Of course, I'm very proud of it. That part's nice. Uh, it gets a little bit difficult when you're doing like, what you often do like 10 in a day, mm -hmm. 10 or 11, and it's like a conveyor belt. And the difficulty there is to keep it fresh because I very much am sincere yeah. and I want to give my best to each person that comes in and I don't ever want to be like oh god is that same question but mm -hmm. so that part gets hard so I try to keep myself my energy level up and try to remember that whoever I'm talking to it's their first question yeah. it might be my hundredth one but it's yeah. their first one so um, it's a necessary part of the job it depends on the interviewer so if, if you get somebody who hasn't done their homework then you think well why are you here uh -huh. you know but if you get somebody who knows what they're talking about and they ask intelligent questions, then to me it's a conversation and I, and I love it. That's it. But it, it makes it easy for someone like me as well, though, because it, <laughs> you do write your material and it is, it is your... You know, sometimes like with the, the, the product bands, the kind of, you know, it, it, you can't have... Because you can't go, what does this track mean to you? What were you where were you when you... Because it's like, I don't know, somebody chose it, put it in front of me, and I put a vocal on it, you know? Right. And it's kind of like... Oh, God, no, so, I'm not like you that, know, though. It's like... <laughs> so uh, we're going back. Yeah. 2004 was when you started working on, on this. And and where where were you um, kind of emotionally? Well, and that it, you know, I have to go back even further than that. It's a strange story with this album. 2004 was when I started to record it, but mm -hmm. this album was starting to be written which is the most important part, in 1990. Yeah. I was ready to leave my 22-year-long relationship. He was also in my band, mm. and I didn't know how to tell him. So I went away and wrote Free the Butterfly, which is all about a breakup. But it's a nice song, but it's about a breakup. And I put it down on tape, and I walked into the front room, and um, I played it for him, hoping that he would get the message. And he said, nice song, Suze. So, but that was the beginning. Yeah. So I went along and I changed everything in my life. I got divorced. I found my music big time again um, and kept writing and writing and writing and gigging and gigging. And the years went by. Um, then I had a couple of years where I had a false start with a record company who went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. That laid me low. Then I had to pick myself up again. And I thought, come on, Susie, you have this great collection of songs. Started to work with Andy Scott from The Suite and his partner, Steve Grant. And then all of a sudden, everything made sense. Everything went, and the album took shape, got the deal with EMI, bang, here's my new album. So it actually is autobiographical. autobiographical. It's called Back to the Drive because that's the memory, mm -hmm. and it goes all the way through from 90 up till now. Yeah. And there's everything on it. There's rock, there's a lot of soft, you know, there's, it's, it's my life, basically. Mm -hmm. With a track like Free the Butterfly, that obviously, um, well, would that even, if you just look at the title, uh, th it's th to me a butterfly is the most delicate, and if it's a trapped butterfly, then, this, you know, I'm, I'm already there without even, you are, you know. You are. The lyrics say, let the chrysalis begin, free the butterfly within, spread my wings, I want to fly. Isn't that sad? It's sad, but it's not. It's hopeful at the same time. Um, I am a Gemini, and Geminis are butterflies. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if you shut the door, I'm out. If you leave the door open, I just flutter around in that area, mm -hmm. you know? But I felt trapped, so it was free the butterfly, yeah. As an artist and a, a creative person, I guess if you feel trapped, did that affect your creativity? Did you feel stifled sort of yeah. within your musical spirit as well? I did. I did feel very stifled in the relationship and creatively. Um, I was starting to branch out. I was starting to grow into my skin, if you like. Mm -hmm. And um, he was not comfortable with that. You know, I was branching out. I was doing musicals and TV talk shows. I had my own show and just branching out. Um, 
And I knew that to keep growing and to emerge from the chrysalis, I had to leave, mm -hmm. which is why I rediscovered my music in 1991, started to write this album, and became a, a whole different person. I, I just, um, I, I have no boundaries anymore. I don't feel like I have to write to an image. I can just be exactly who I am. Mm -hmm. And I don't worry about it. When I write, I just write. I don't think, oh, can Susie Quattro sing that song? Because now Susie Quattro, the product, and Susie Quattro from Detroit are now one person. But I had to be alone to become that person. I think that's reflected on the album, though, is that, that it is multifaceted. It's not, you know, it's not just rock. It's not there just is ballads. rock. Yeah. It's not just ballads. You know, you've got a cover in there. Uh, it, it does show sort of, and that's who we are as people really, isn't it? We're not just one thing. And it must be quite frustrating for you if people, because you, you are a rock legend. And, you know, you just say Susie Quattro and everyone, oh, you know. They have the immediate yeah. leather jumpsuit, bass guitar, screaming, wah, yeah, yeah, sure. So when people approach this album, what would you like them, I mean, would you like them to try and be a bit more kind of open and sort of, not stick with that those sort of preconceived I don't care how they approach this album um, it speaks for itself mm -hmm. all the fans so far the feedback on the websites and all that they are going not so mm -hmm. on the album like not so not one person has made the comment about oh we'd like a bit more rock or not one person they're accepting this as who I am you know if something if something comes from your heart and your soul it can't be wrong it just can't be wrong people we hear it that way and I think everybody that hears these songs they feel them mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter that it's me I mean they know I'm not 25 anymore I'm 55 mm -hmm. and I've lived my life I've lived a lot of my life so here's the album enjoy it you know there's plenty for them to rock to but it's my painting and a painting has many colors and you must be the coolest grandma in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were doing the uh, hello shoot the other day. And my granddaughter wasn't supposed to be there, but the universe throws things at you. All of a sudden, she was there. She was obviously supposed to be there. And we took a lunch break. So all the crew were there with the lights and the this and the that, and all the interviewers and the cameraman and Amy, my granddaughter, sitting next to me. And she said, uh, Grandma. I said, yeah, she went, you're the queen of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> All the journalists, they went, you taught her to say that. I said, I did not. She's four and a half years old. She says exactly what she likes. What a cute thing to say. <laughs> what a cute thing to say. I don't know where she got that from. That's a strange one, but I love it. I come from a big family. Uh, the first grandchild in my own family was born when I was 10. Mm -hmm. Plus, I had a younger sister, so really, I don't know a time yeah. when there wasn't little babies around the house. And uh, I'm Italian, Hungarian, Catholic. Hey, we're family people. You seem to almost been well. You were destined for this life, obviously, but um, uh, not not so much of running so much. Where's where's your where's your heart now, and where where is home? Or are you are you kind of you've been freed and. Um, are you kind of just out there and enjoying or you know where's where's home for you now that always stops me dead in my tracks and somebody says where where's home because I don't know uh, Detroit is where I come from England is where I've lived for over half of my adult life my kids were conceived born and raised here my husband is German we have a home there I, I guess my home is the house I've lived in since 1980. It's a real part of me. It's haunted. It's 15th century. Um, I feel kind of like uh, Scarlett O'Hara and Tara, you know. Yeah. And I promise I will never go hungry again. <laughs> God is my witness. Um, I feel like that's my strength, that house. Uh -huh. When I come back to that, everything makes sense. It really is my home. Um, so I guess the Essex countryside. Yeah. God, I said that. Now I can't take it back. <laughs> She's an Essex girl. Oh, uh, no. Yes. I need a handbag. <laughs> Can you believe I said that? I'm an Essex girl. Oh, <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Doomed. <laughs> There's no rock light. The cool has been wiped. <laughs> street cred out the window. That's hilarious. <laughs> 
guess for you, um, what's what's going to work with this is getting on the road again. I, I, it's, you've already got dates out there. You've got tours planned. I guess it's just going to grow and grow. Um, do you still get that passion when you you know you're sort of stood waiting to go on stage? You get the the butterflies using you know. Uh, I do. Um, I don't know what it is about me. I started being professional when I was 14. We went on the road. I went on the road, left school at 15. And that's a lot of years. Like I say, I'm 55 now. I still go on that stage. I get this like, it's like a drug. It's a legal drug. And just before I walk out, I think, I hope they like me, still. Mm -hmm. And there's a live video of me that came out about two years ago called Leather Forever. And people have pointed out to me time and time again how when you see me on stage, it's, you can see that it's like the first time all over again for me. I have this big grin, mm -hmm. no bullshit, it's just me. I, I love what I do. I love performing. I do believe that that's what God put me on this earth for. Mm -hmm. It must be like that legal high that, you know, you can go out there and adrenaline is just, it's an amazing drug, isn't oh. it? Oh, it's incredible. And it takes you hours to come down. Hours. You know, when I come off, in fact, I need a glass of wine. I never drink when I go on stage. I'm really against it. I think they should see the performer edge and all, and the booze yeah. takes the edge off. But as soon as I come off, after about 20 minutes or so, I like my little glass of red wine, because otherwise it's like falling off an elevator. It's the weirdest feeling. One minute people are screaming, the next minute you're like, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> you then you have to go and come back into yourself, you know? So when you're going on, on, on the road this time, um, how much of an entourage do you have with you? Is it stripped down or you got it down to pat, you know? Um, does, does the family come with, uh, you know, how? I don't, I used to take my kids with me everywhere I went. Um, mm -hmm. And about three or four years ago, they actually came to Australia with me. That was before, no, it's been about six years ago. Uh, I had Laura up on stage doing a song with me and I had Richard working on the crew. Um, Loris begged me to come to the next Australian trip with Amy. Those kids grew up there. I've done yeah. 21 tours there. Uh, I've got it, though, pretty much down to a fine art. Uh, Mickey Most, bless him, he's gone. He's really on my mind lately. Um, he always taught me to keep things to a sensible level. And um, I have a seven-piece band and three crew. It's okay, not too bad. I do my own makeup, what little there is of it. Um, you don't really have to iron black leather, so. Um, I keep it sensible. You know, it, it's it's a show, it runs on its own little steam. Yeah, I'm not one of these diva type people. I never have been, actually. Australia, um, you obviously have, as you say, a, a great uh, tie and affection with that place, but as well, the, the thing about Australia, I find is they have that great live music, um, you know, that still is, burning strong there. Well, what they're now saying is that it's coming back in, in Britain with, with sort of, you know, the live music and uh, Thank God. It's, it's coming back. Have you, have you sort of seen that and there's any bands who you kind of are thinking? Because I, I keep looking, I keep thinking, oh, I've heard all this before. <laughs> you know, quite a few of the bands that everybody's um, pushing at the moment. It's kind yeah. of, oh, sure. I've but there are, there are, i got to say, I mean, I felt like that too for a long time. And I think it's this disposable, the disposable pop star thing that's happening. Um, there's a track on the album called 15 Minutes of Fame, mm -hmm. which is my comment on um, these overnight pop stars. You know, mm -hmm. one minute they're there, the next minute they're gone. It's not good for them, it's not good for the business. Although, I must say, if I'm honest, the shows are watchable. Yeah. You can't help but get being caught up into it. Of course they are, especially when you see the bad ones. They're even better than seeing the good ones. Because um, they're funny. <laughs> But there are now, there is now a move towards musicians again. Yeah. You're starting to see bands who can play. Thank God. That disappeared for a long time. You know, Kaiser Chiefs can play, Coldplay can play. There's some bands coming. Katie Tunstall, she can play her guitar. You know, I just love her. Um, people say that she, she reminds them of me, yeah. which not really, but I think in the attitude she does. A yeah. little bit of the attitude. She's a little bit rock chicky, um, but she's much softer voice than me, but I love her. Um, so it is slowly, slowly coming back, and that's a good thing. That's a healthy thing. Yeah, I agree. I love Katie's, which she does. She has a totally Great. right attitude. Yeah, she's I, done, I mean, if you look at the Brits, I mean, she was like really the only female who was 
acknowledge there. Good girl. Really, you Good know. Girl. I mean, Kay Madonna, but. <laughs> I'd love to do a, a duet with KT Tunstall, actually. Oh. And my next album, I'm going to ask her. I think that would be great. I think she'd really yeah. go for that. I think she'd be up for it, yeah. Yeah, she's a good fun girl as well. But you know, she's cut her teeth as well. It's she not an overnight success, nope. you know. Overnight sense. doesn't work. So uh, Overnight does not work any better than one night stands work. Just don't work. No, I know that. And in the morning, <laughs> yeah, and in the morning there is no respect whatsoever. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. I always say, I don't know. Cause I, I just feel so it's shit the next day. It's no, not good. It's, yeah. it's, it's we've all done it, but yeah. we've always woken up. I, if you're like me, I've kind of gone. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's different for guys. Totally different for guys. Really? Guys don't really care. They, they, you, you're, you are kind of fine with it, but women, if they do it, they mm. always regret mm. if you've been brought up properly, which I have. Yeah. I know. I it doesn't leave you. You feel cheap. You feel used. Girls. Even if it's you that did the pulling and it's you that made the choice, you still feel used. Yeah. And 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 unfeminine. Yeah. It's still hard being a woman. Isn't yeah, it is. <laughs> but that that's the that's the nature of the beast. It's okay. It's okay. We can live with it. We have our our positives. We have our positives. I mean, I just looking back at your your career and that. I mean, you you have achieved so much. Is there is there anything that you, I always think you you regret what you ha you don't do, not what you you did do, apart from one night stands. <laughs> um, uh, is, is there anything that you kind of is, is still out there and you're thinking, no, oh, yeah, I'll keep that one from you know? Yeah. Oh, there's only one thing I haven't actually done, and that's acted in a movie. I've done lots oh, yeah. of television, yeah. and I've tread the West End, you know, tread the boards. Um, but the girl who's producing my documentary, directing it, Vic Vicky Blue. And the documentary is coming out later this year. It's called Naked Under Leather, because mm -hmm. it's all about me. Um, she is also directing films, so I've told her now that's... I, I do have to act in a film. It's the one thing I haven't done. I'd love to do that. I'm a good actress. I'm a very real actress. I become the part. I don't act it. Excellent. That's kind of dangerous. It takes me a while to get rid of it. It's the only way I know how to do it. I actually become it. So the DVD that um, is, have you filmed most of that or the documentary? It's all filmed. She's now in the editing process. Uh -huh. What do you learn about yourself when you go into a project like that? Well, apparently, although I'm the one that did a lot of the interviews, Vicky told me the other day on the phone, "Wait, do you see what we've got on film?" I said, "I know I was there." She said, "No." Wait, do you see what we've got on film? I'm talking about your eyes and the things you didn't say. Mm. I said, "Whoa." She said, you are going to cry. You're going to be shocked. Because she said, there's a whole story there. It's, it's, you know, like what's underneath, how you did it, what you did, what you did. She said, you are going to be shocked. Wow. And I'm kind of going, oh, <laughs> God, what am I going to find out about myself? It's very insightful, though, because often they say it's, this, it's the space that is equally important. It's the beat between the beat yeah. that, that you really see. You know, there's a lot of issues with my family and... Um, I really had to struggle and I really had to fight and that's all in there, you know, and uh, I remember she asked me some questions about my mom. My mom's dead. And in fact, my mother inspired sometimes love is letting go. Um, and I thought, oh, I'm going to cry now because it's about my mom. And of course I did. And then she said, now tell me about the breakup of your first marriage. I said, fine. I had it. Bang. It was like it, I was sobbing like it was yesterday. It was like years ago. So obviously still in my heart, still mm -hmm. is a painful situation. Mm -hmm. Things like that you don't expect, you know? Yeah. But I roll with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Andrew. I really enjoyed it. Thank yeah, thank you. you. Have a brain. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I don't. I always forget this bit. Could you do hi? I'm Susie Quattro. And you're watching Entertainment Now. Hi, I'm Susie Quattro, and you are watching Entertainment Now. Brilliant. Lovely.